No matter how much we talk about feminism and gender equality, it is still twice as difficult for a woman to prove her worth. My guest for today was brave enough to fight against all odds and carve her distinct identity. Poonam Dalal Dahiya, a Haryana Police Services officer, was nine months pregnant when she appeared for her civil services prelims, and a baby was barely three months old when she cracked mains. Today, she is undergoing training as an Indian Revenue Services officer at Nagpur. Thank you so much for joining us today, Poonam. Thank you for having me here. So I uh, read that you started your career as a primary school teacher um, in a government school. Yes. How did UPSC happen? Well, I would say that uh, UPSC civil service, being into UPSC civil services was always a dream. But uh, uh, like I started my career as a primary teacher and at that point of time, uh, I was, I would say, I, I was not having the right amount of guidance and also uh, I would say under confidence also. So somehow I uh, was like, I always knew that I'm going to give it a shot, but when that I, I was not sure of. So uh, afterwards, after completing my graduation, I gave State Bank PU and uh, then SSC and uh, that was a turning point well I got 7th rank in SSC graduate level examination and uh, moreover I, I was 28 at that time mm -hmm. so I thought that if even if I'm not giving it so uh, my attempts are gonna waste mm -hmm. so uh, and also that 7th rank actually motivated me that I can write an exam so uh, that way I actually gathered all the courage which I was not having that till then the confidence and also I looked for certain guidance for the exam and I gave UPSC. So you just mentioned the uh, SBI right now and then SSC CGL and then you also gave uh, the entrance exam for uh, Union Bank yes. as well and you cleared all of them right after your graduation. Uh, three must have qualities which a person like basically should must have to clear these examinations. Well, I would say that uh, the one of the major, not quality, I would say that uh, one of the major things which basic things which you need to do, one is that to uh, familiarize with the content of the exam, whatever exam you are setting, like I have cleared uh, right from the teaching exams, uh, like teachers training exam to a uh, bank PO to SSC graduate level to state civil services. So I would say the basic thing uh, is that you need to be very acquainted, uh, you, you get yourself acquainted with the exam pattern. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if bank PO, it requires maths, logical reasoning. So you need to know what exactly are the basics uh, you have, they are looking for. Second, I would say that keep get your basics right. Like you, your fundamentals of any exam should be right. Mm -hmm. You uh, and after you, once you get your fundamental rights, I would say third is that you practice as many mock tests as possible, because that way you will master the exam in a, in in your own setting, and then you can give the best shot uh, the day of the exam. So I would say there's three things you need to do. Also, I've realized that beyond a point, people actually lose interest, they uh, get tired, they're not that motivated. What's that one thing which keeps you going? Well, I would say that uh, it is like um, the dreams, I would say, like uh, especially uh, like this dream of civil service was always there. But as I said earlier, that uh, the courage was not there. So I would say dreams and also uh, to fulfill uh, your parents aspiration that thing is there just to make them proud so I was like always uh, all through my uh, to make them proud to make your family feel uh, happy for you and you know proud of you that thing actually keeps me going I always want to do something new in life something meaningful so I think I'm just exploring all of the different things which give me that inner satisfaction also and uh, like you know uh, if your family is happy uh, for me a big parameter is my family so if my family is happy I'm happy. So I've also uh, seen a lot of people feel underconfident uh, because of their average school achievements, mm -hmm. which in turn demoralizes them. Uh, when it comes to cracking UPSC or life in general, what's your take on this? I would say that's nothing to get depressed or not even, you know, uh, get demotivated by it because ultimately beat any exam. Uh, if you put in a hard work, like if let's say your scores are not matching your uh, expectation and all, so don't get dis disheartened by it. Learn from where you are, uh, you know, doing mistakes and all. And ultimately I've seen many people who are just average scorers and have been into top 
uh, services like so that is uh, definitely i would say that don't get uh, demoralized by them just uh, learn from that and put in a lot of hard work for the next papers and you'll get through the persistence matters actually the persistent efforts and i would say the regular uh, you know regular time schedule put in uh, daily uh, the regularity matters but put in daily 7 to 8 hours of study so that way i think any average scorer can do uh, good in any field whatever he wants but what you require is motivation and also that you have set your eyes on it and you are very much going for the goal okay. one of the most common queries we receive almost every day is how to start uh, your preparation when you have a fixed 9 to 5 job mm -hmm. how is it for you to start preparation when you are actually working 24 by 7 in the police force along with the people <laughs> well uh, i would say definitely it is challenging like especially with the job um, in your hand you cannot devote a lot of time but then uh, i think the art is that you know your circumstances you know your challenges and you need to make the most out of those challenges only for example i can give from my example uh, that uh, when i i knew that i'm only having 4 hours at my disposable at max like 2 uh, hours in the night and 2 hours i can take in the day in the morning so what i used to do i used to uh, in the february the notification came and that time i came to know that uh, i have to give the i am getting that time to uh, you know i've got this opportunity to uh, give the exam so that time uh, what i did i have since uh, february only i started uh, putting in uh, making the most of whatever time i was having so i think that's a trick make a schedule of your own depending on your circumstances and uh, plan your schedule but stick to your plan and also audit your output like okay. make a plan in the morning for your for your day i what i used to do i used to uh, make a monthly plan a weekly plan and a daily plan now for that i knew that from the monthly plan i used to know that how many uh, months i am having at my disposal and how much syllabus i have to cover mm -hmm. so i used to distribute the syllabus according to the time at my disposal and what are the crucial areas see if the time is less you need to focus on the most important crucial areas so that I, that i used to do and uh, i would say that it's all uh, each uh, you know according to their own need and their own uh, you know ability and also the, at the time they are having but trust me the upsc many people are having this kind of thing that uh, upsc require a lot of uh, hours it is not that it, you need to make the most of whatever hours you are having mm -hmm. in fact i would say that uh, as they say that uh, it's there's no it's not uh, uh, you're not sure that whatever cards uh, what cards you are having but mm -hmm. make sure that whatever cards you are having you play good with them mm -hmm. so you may not have the best cards but play best with the whatever cards you are having so i believe your first attempt at upsc csc was in 2009 when you were 28 years yes so would you like to shed some light on the kind of struggles you faced when you started preparing at a later stage in your life well i would say that uh, the first struggle started with myself only uh, you you having so many doubts about yourself your abilities about your so much uh, you know uh, not having uh, information about where to start how to start what are the sources you should go through should you uh, take coaching because uh, or you should not go for coaching so all these kind of questions and all and so then uh, you have to choose a subject then from where to study then how much to study how to study mm -hmm. so all these questions you come across mm -hmm. so i think uh, the and also secondly is that when you are in a uh, at this kind of age there is so much pressure family pressure peer pressure that everybody is working and you are just taking either a uh, off or you are just resigning for your job from your job and you are sitting for the exam taking all the risk and everything so so much of added pressure is again on your shoulders that if you are not able to make it then what mm -hmm. what you are going to do so i would say that uh, one has to judge uh, what exactly he or she wants from life and then uh, if you have decided in favor of upsc then leave everything and just uh, go for it with um, give your best and i would that I, i always say give your best and leave the rest so that's it so it's not an easy task to manage your personal and professional life mm -hmm. together Uh, prioritizing things and time management is very difficult especially when you have a baby how do you manage to i would say that uh, it is it all became possible with the support of my family and uh, my husband especially and of course my uh, i have got two uh, wonderful younger brothers and uh, my mother in law father in law they used to take turns in handling uh, 
Vikrant did there for me. So, uh, and uh, I would also say that uh, the kind of push, the and it's also when everybody around is so supportive about your dreams, your aspirations. So you also uh, give your best because you try. At least you try to give your best, whatever you can. So that because so many people's uh, hopes are uh, with you. So that actually keeps you going. You asked me earlier also what keeps you going. So I would say along with dreams, the support also matters. Mm -hmm. So I'm lucky enough that I've got such a wonderful support at my home. So what is your take on women empowerment? Do you think we're moving in the right direction on this? Well, I would say that uh, women empowerment for me is uh, not just uh, one term. It's more of a, I'd say uh, you need to actually live through that concept. So it's not only about women uh, financial independence or her. Uh, it should be about independence and her uh, on all different aspects, like you know her uh, emotional independence, her uh, social independence, a right, a recognition in her own way. So for me, I feel that women empowerment uh, should start from uh, the family, like from the home itself. A girl, a uh, child should be. Uh, not uh, should be treated as just equal not even special i would say i would say just equal with uh, her siblings and she should be able to choose the course of her life as the life progress like a lady should be able to choose whatever she wants to do for her life she want to be a homemaker perfect enough if she really wants that but if she wants to uh, go in a professional field then then everybody needs to support her her decisions and dreams so i think the women empowerment uh, unless and until it starts from the family uh, we won't be able to have it and as you asked me that are we moving in the right direction, I would say that uh, uh, somewhat, but I feel that uh, it should, uh, the focus should be more on the education to creating more educational opportunities. And I would also say that uh, at the family level. What's that one secret success mantra? Well, I would say that if I have to choose only one, uh, I would say believe in yourself and your dreams. Don't uh, lose on to your dreams. And uh, when the time is right, you will definitely uh, reach that. So that's it. As I would say, in my case, I certainly believe in this thing that there's a dialogue of movie now that when the puri, agar ap shiddat se kisi cheez ko chahte hai, to puri kainat aapko mm -hmm. usko milane mein kar jati hai. To I feel that the when I got this extra attempt, my, in my case, I always want you to be into civil services. Mm -hmm. So when I got this extra attempt, I always feel so that there was no way I was very much uh, somehow I have uh, made peace with my destiny that okay I'm not getting into uh, you know civil services that way I was in Haryana civil services but not in the through UPSC so I've made peace with this myself who would have known that I would get an extra attempt and I would be writing exam under such circumstances when I'm nine months pregnant I'm writing my prelims and even like you know my my son was only two and a half months old when I wrote my main so I never imagined that I could clear in, in this attempt, but I then I could. So I would say that just hold uh, fast on to your dreams because, uh, and still I feel that this is just not the stop for me. It's, it's, it's a big journey. So uh, I have got other bigger dreams now. So let's see how things go forward. You see, you have come a long way, right? From uh, teaching to all these entrance exams to UPSC and everything. That one myth which mm -hmm. any aspirant should mm -hmm. not believe at all. One myth, okay. I would say... Most common myth. I think one, one most common myth is that that you have to put in at least, if you any serious exam you want to qualify, you have to put in 15-16 uh, hours of study. Pure din you have to be a kitabi kira and you have to just study, study, study. I would say that, no. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Because personally, uh, uh, talking from my own personal experience, I never studied beyond 8 hours. Ever, ever, like beat any for attempt anything. for anything, for anything. I think you need to have a proper strategy at your hand and then you have to implement that strategy. You need to invest your time very wisely. Like as I mentioned earlier about the schedule, the weekly, daily and uh, monthly schedule. So stick to that, stick to the schedule. Uh, you, uh, any exam, beat any exam, let it be, I think UPSC is one of the toughest one, let it be, there must be many more tougher exam, but I sincerely believe that if you put in daily six to seven hours for any exam, for that matter, I think you'll crack it, that's but with a, yeah, that's more than enough, so time management, uh, that issues about time and being kitabi kita, you need to enjoy life, you need to enjoy certain other things, be stress free, there are certain other things, so including with the time thing. So I think we need to really, you need to really work on that.
and now you have become an author as well. Your new book is out in market, uh, Ancient and Medieval India. Uh, would you like to talk about? Yeah, I would definitely love to talk about that because, uh, uh, see, why I wrote this book, uh, reasoning that that uh, in the market there's actually not a not one source for history, especially for Asian and medieval history. And uh, uh, I I'm a history fan. Uh, my son name is Vikramaditya, so you can guess my love for it. So uh, when I was uh, being a history fan, when I started my preparation, I uh, used to devote more time to history. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you do so when you you like a subject, but there was unfortunately not one source for a for somebody to study. Mm -hmm. Like there are, there are so many sources: NCRT, Tamil Nadu State Books, that NIOS notes, and IGNU MA notes, and Upendra Singh, AL Basham. So uh, I was feeling so much. You know, I had this kind of uh, I, again I would say dream that I when if I ever get successful, I will definitely write do something about it. So when I got this opportunity. Uh, when I clear it and my notes were uh, very ready, uh, the history notes I've compiled from many sources. And then uh, when I got this opportunity from Magdro Hill to write for them uh, for Asian and medieval history. So I took on the plunge, but they made me research like anything more. So uh, then I, I tried to plug in the loopholes which I faced because mm -hmm. in my book, if you see, uh, there's a section, uh, the, after every chapter, there are certain questions from last year papers. So I've put in a research of 15 years last year paper because after doing a topic now, normally what aspirants feel is that as myself in every subject, I used to feel that I've done a topic. Now, from where I should uh, know that have have I done it correctly or how to master it? How could I know this? How could I know that I have I actually know this topic? So how you can know? You could only know once you complete some questions. So that's that's the thing which I've done. There are two uh, uh, concise charts after at the end of the book. So you know what and uh, and all the most of the books I I am more of a point person, bullet points. Mm -hmm. So that I try to incorporate in my book. So all these kind of things I try to address in my book. So let me just compare two scenarios. One was Poonam as an aspirant in 2009. Mm -hmm. And today when you meet the aspirants who are preparing and given their exams in 2017, what's mm -hmm. the kind of difference do you feel in both? Well, I would uh, I say that uh, I'll envy the today's aspirant more because the kind of sources you are you're having right now, today, uh, they are much more, uh, you know, they're having such uh, wide uh, sources uh, on a platter to them. Like earlier, if you have to go through an interview in 2009 when I appeared, uh, any any source, first of all, the whole struggle was about wh from where to read. What are the sources what one should go by? And the only, uh, if you have to read, uh, go through the, you know, toppers interview, that was only a chronicle or an, any magazine. Now the internet has opened so, such avenues and um, so many portals are there, even Unacademy is there. Like you can go through their toppers interview and uh, you can go through their whole blogs and you can check out that what are the sources they read, what are the mistakes they committed and what you should not do. So even I would feel I have given both the attempts, like 2009 I appeared, 2015 I appeared in a different circumstance altogether. So I I was more than amazed by the sources uh, we are having right now and in fact I did a lot of preparation, my uh, my own preparation the last attempt uh, through this open sources only. Like uh, I think and it's also perfect because for otherwise you have to go to a coaching institute, you attend a lecture and you come out. And these open sources like I, I remember uh, while traveling I used to uh, see a quick 10 minute video of an academy on some topic and my concepts are clear. There's somebody teaching there 24 into 7 that is available 24 into 7. So that's something like I really feel that uh, it's really good. It was lovely talking to you Poonam and I hope our conversation will motivate aspirants to keep chasing their dreams and with this thought I would like to wish you all the very best for your book. Thank you so much Tanvi and uh, I would say that it's more of my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you.